by Sarah 1281. Chapter 20. Impenetrable defenses are kind of boring. The day of the tune-in exam finals arrived at last. Concerned about Minato's safety since not only Orochimaru, but at the very least Madara had their eye on Kanaha, Kakashi talked the Hokage into letting him into the Kage box as a guard. It would have been easier to convince Minato to have either Brin or Obito in there as well, given there were his team, but Obito was proctoring and Rin was on healing tune-in hopefuls duty. Instead, Kakashi had eventually managed to persuade Minato to have Itachi. As another guard. Hopefully the three of them would be enough should anything happen. Sasuke, Sakura, Naruto, Tamari, Gara, Shikamaru, Kiba, Neji, Lee, and Shino were all gathered on the arena floor for some last minute instructions from their proctor. They would be showing up any time now, they were sure. Where is he? Sakura asked irritably, turning to Sasuke. How should I know? Sasuke snapped back. You live with him! Sakura reminded him. He left the house before I did, Sasuke told her. So honestly, I have no idea. What do you think, Naruto? Sakura asked. I think... I can't believe Sasuke actually showed up on time! Naruto said, shaking his head in amusement. Because, you know, last time... Shut up! Sasuke ordered. That wasn't my fault. You never did tell us what took so long, Sakura reminded. Sasuke shivered. You're better off not knowing, believe me. Naruto demanded. You know how Kakashi always has the most idiotic excuses for why he was late? Sasuke asked rhetorically. Well, it turns out that while he did spend most of that time staring at the memorial, he also got into some of the most bizarre situations. That poor tree. What happened? Sakura pressed. But Sasuke refused to say any more on the subject. Frustrated, Naruto turned to Gara. So, how was your month? I haven't killed anyone in 30 days, Gara informed him. I'm actually at a loss as to when the last time I went seven days without killing anyone was. Naruto winced. That's great, but you might not want to mention that in front of any of the people involved in the exam. Or that might get back to my dad. Most Kenin don't kill anyone, so to do it so frequently might make him wonder. Gara nodded. Duly noted. It is kind of funny, though, Tamari confided. Poor Kankaro was still convinced you guys did something or made a double ganger or whatnot. Naruto feigned innocence. I don't know what you're talking about! I noticed you guys because of those evil soulless puppets on Kankaro's and my empathy for you guys having to deal with something like that on a daily basis might have propelled me to talk to you, but I love meeting new people! We really did just treat you guys like everybody else! Exactly, Tamari stressed. That just doesn't happen! Naruto looked confused. Oh, because you guys are the kids of the Kazakage? Well, I'm the son of the Hokage, so that's not really such a big deal for me either. Never mind, Tamari said, shaking her head ruefully. Did my opponent for the first round just fall asleep? Naruto quickly glanced over at Shikamaru, who had sat down and seemed to be snoring. It would appear so, he agreed. Oh, this is so not fair, Tamari complained. How did I get stuck with such a lame opponent? If you think he's so lame, it should be an easy victory, right? Naruto asked her. Easy and impressive are not necessarily one and the same, and there is no way me taking down someone who won't even stay conscious now will ever be seen as impressive, Tamari replied. Well, there will be other matches, Naruto offered. Being late is so unyouthful, Lee said mournfully. I really want to have my most youthful match with Naruto. Hello everyone, sorry I'm late, Obito said, strolling into the arena. There was this tree and, well, you're probably better off not knowing. Definitely better off if it was what I think it was, Sasuke agreed quietly. Oh, Kami, not another story you refuse to elaborate on, Sakura groaned. You haven't even gotten the squirrel story yet! To be fair, I don't know what happened either, Sasuke told her. But I will. So help me, I will. Okay, before we start, I just want to make sure everyone remembers who they are fighting, Omito said. How can someone forget who they're fighting? Kiba demanded. You couldn't possibly specialize your training specifically around your first opponent if you don't know who it is. I don't know who I'm fighting! Naruto said. I know Sakura's fighting Neji, Shino's against Kara, Sasuke and Kiba have a grunge match, and Shikamaru's with Tamari, of course. No way, I guess I do know 
we're fighting after all. By process of elimination, Chino noted. Now we're just trying to. Well, wax, wax! You realize Lee just mentioned he was fighting you, right? Neji asked. Naruto shook his head. Nope, I must not have been paying attention! So what else is now? Shigamaru murmured. Okay, since Naruto just reminded anyone else who might have forgotten of the matchups, I'm going to move on to reminding you that there are no rules here, except that you need to keep the fight down here and no firing into the crowd. Seriously, you have no idea what that would do to our tourist industry. Obito shook his head at the thought. So, aside from giving our fights geographical boundaries and not killing potential customers, anything's fair game? Tamari asked. Obito nodded. Absolutely. The matches go until either one party gives up or dies. If it's clear that one party cannot continue to fight, I will call the match. If you do not stop after I do so, you will be disqualified. Also, if a death looks completely senseless, it will be allowed, but it will really hurt your chances of passing the MSR, so I wouldn't recommend it. Now, unless there are any more questions, the first fight is Gara versus Chino. So everyone else clear out. So how do you think Gara will do? Minato asked the Kazekage. I have full faith in his abilities. The Kazekage responded with confidence. I may not know much about his opponents, but I am certain that Gara can come out victorious. Shino does bugs, Kakashi announced. And while his victory will undoubtedly be amusing, I'm still pulling for Gara. Really? Minato glanced back at him. But Shino was from Kanaha. Yes, do you find it at all strange that of ten finalists, there are two from Suna and the other eight are from Kanaha? The Kage asked. There are always more candidates entered from the nation that hosts the exam, Manato responded. From what I understand, six of your eight are rookies, though, the Kage pointed out. That is simply unheard of. We have a very talented group of rookies this year, Manato explained. Clearly. To answer your question, Hokage-sama, I bet on Gara, Kakashi replied. You should have more faith in your village, Minato chided. I have plenty of faith, Kakashi insisted, but I just don't see how bugs can take down sand armor. You also bet on the Kazekage's daughter, Itachi reminded him. Minato frowned disapprovingly. Well, yeah, Kakashi sounded sheepish, but in my defense, Shikamaru doesn't really seem to want to be here, so I can't imagine he'll be willing to face three matches. You are one of the Jonin senseis who has a team still in the exam, yes? Uh, the Kaisekage asked. Kakashi looked mildly surprised. Yes, yes I am. Is it really fair of you to be placing bets then, given that you have intimate information on at least one of the Ganin? The Kaisekage continued. Three, actually. Kakashi corrected, a hint of pride in his voice. And as far as I'm concerned, if it's legal, it's fair. Besides, I wasn't even really planning on betting on all of them. Let me get this straight. Minato said, raising his eyebrows. Naruto knows the Rasengan and signed with the Toads, and Sasuke knows the Jidori and has a Mgenkyo Sharingan, and you wanted to bet against them? Well, not them, Kakashi admitted. Sakura, though, but Itachi wouldn't let me. You need to have more faith in your team, Itachi insisted. If she finds out that her own Jonin Sensei has no faith in her, it will have a debilitating effect on her performance. And if she does not pass, Sasuke is in for a very rough year. It's not like I don't have faith in her, Kakashi defended himself. I do, it's just... Neji. Hyuga Neji. The Kazekage perked up. I had heard he was quite the prodigy. He is the one who beat my other son, Kankuro, so handily. Neji is quite gifted, Minato acknowledged. I'm glad, the Kazekage remarked. From what I've gathered, Kankuro's defeat was shameful, so I would at least prefer the victor to be skilled. Sakura beat Neji's cousin, Hinata. Itachi pointed out, and they are young enough to rely heavily on the same family skill. Then she's a lot better than Inata, Kakashi countered. Although you are right, she does know how to beat that, just whether or not she can. She trained with Tsunade, hopefully that will have given her some results. Betting against one's team is far more dicey than betting on them, Minato informed him. Why is that? Kakashi asked. Because if she does lose, then people will cry foul and claim she threw the match, Minato explained. Sakura! Throw a match? Not a chance, Kakashi declared. And like I said, I couldn't bet against her, so I put a little down in her favor. The odds are so against her that on the off chance she wins, I'll make a killing. May our fight be honorable and impressive, Shino said politely once the arena floor had been cleared of everyone but him, his opponent, and the proctor. 
Kara merely nodded. Ready? Begin! Obito said before stepping back. Kara and Shino stared at each other for a moment, both preferring not to be the one to make the first move. Then Kara sent an experimental wave of sand at Shino, who merely stood there. The sand enveloped the Aburame up to his neck, and Kara slowly tightened the sand around him. It cannot be that easy! Naruto complained. Come on, Shino! Do something! Shino's battles are always kind of boring. Kiba confided, but that doesn't mean that he's going down on the first hit. Sure enough, as Gara continued to squeeze Shino's body, it broke apart to reveal it had been but a bug clone. The real Shino, standing a good 20 feet away from his dispersed clone, sent those bugs Gara's way, only to be stopped by Gara's automatic sand shield. So wait, the fight is going to consist of Gara being unable to get at Shino because he'll keep switching them out for bugs, and Shino not being fast enough to get through to Gara? Sakura surmised. Looks like it, Sasuke agreed, which won't be very much fun to watch. At least it might take a while, Shikamaru spoke up. The whole exam is so very troublesome. Then why are you even here? Tamari demanded. Because dealing with Azuma, Eno, and scariest of all, my mother, if I don't make it, is even more troublesome, Shikamaru explained with a yawn. Oh, I will show you troublesome, Tamari growled. Save the flirting for the match, Tamari, Naruto advised absently. The Suno Kunoichi turned incredulous and angry eyes on him, and he quickly ducked behind Sasuke. I need a human shield, Naruto implored. Sasuke couldn't believe this kind of thing kept happening to him. <laughs> Stay back, Naruto told Tamari, pushing Sasuke in front of him. He's too cute to die! Kiba immediately perked up at this. Is that a... Not one word, Sasuke said dangerously. <gasps> Difficult match or what? Kiba continued without missing a beat. If they can't get to each other, then they can't end the match or even really showcase their skills. After a few more false starts on both of their ends, Gara seemed to come to a decision. He sent a sand out again, slow enough for Shino to replace himself with a clone as he had been doing, but this time, instead of just trying to immobilize him, he wrapped Shino's bug clone completely in sand. Before Shino could do anything, Gara clenched his fist tightly and said, Sabaku Soso! Instead of the customary blood and gore this technique usually brought, when the sand imploded, it left little black shredded remains from the hundreds of bugs forming the Shino clones everywhere. My bugs, Shino said quietly. I may have no plans to kill you, Gara said slowly, but I have no compunctions about completely wiping out your army of insects. If you keep using them to shield you, then I will destroy them all. Once I do that, I will be able to attack you directly. Shino stood silently for a moment, contemplating the news. Finally, he said, There is nothing to be done then. Why? Because this match is not worth the destruction of my colony. I forfeit. The winner is Gara, Obito announced. The next match is between Naruto and Lee. As soon as we clear out all the bugs. Naruto met Gara on the stairs back to the where the rest of the tune-in hopefuls had gathered. Well, that match looked so incredibly frustrating, I was getting annoyed! Yes, I think I am beginning to understand why an impenetrable defense like mine would get to be wearisome for my opponents, Gara agreed. Fortunately, he cares too much for those bugs of his to go through with a senseless slaughter, or it may have taken even longer. I noticed you didn't make any attempt to kill him until the end when you knew it would be a bug one, Naruto commented. Kara nodded. I have lasted a month without blood. I can last three matches. Naruto grinned. I'll appreciate it when I see you in the finals. Kara nodded again, looking thoughtful. It's strange. The longer I go without killing, the harder it is. But it's easier, too. Why? Naruto didn't get it. Kara just shook his head. Never mind. Tough break, Shino! Kiba said once his teammate had rejoined them on the balcony that served as a waiting area. Indeed, Shino agreed. Kiba reached down to scratch Akamaru behind the ears. I understand, though. If it came down to a match or Akamaru's life, well, I wouldn't even have to think about it. Akamaru barked happily. Uh, Sasuke? Kiba said. Yes, Sasuke asked, wondering why the possibly more annoying version of Naruto persisted in speaking to him. Akamaru said that should you try? He's going for the throat. Kiba warned. Sasuke rolled his eyes. Oh, relax. I'm not going to hold your dog hostage. Yeah, 
Sakura chimed in. Because wild people might be okay with bugs biting it, dogs are adorable. And something tells me that a title like Puppy Killer would be enough to scare off even the most rabid of fangirls. Although, if you were going to use him in the fight, Sasuke began. Instantly, half the room glared at him. Kidding, call me. You shouldn't make jokes, Sasuke! Naruto said, shaking his head. It freaks me out! Come on, that can't be nearly as disturbing as you cross-dressing. Sasuke shot back, especially you cross-dressing as that man. Yeah, that never happened, remember? Naruto reminded him. And don't let me start on your drag form! The rest of the room watched in stunned silence. Sakura, we said at last, what kind of things do your teammates get up to in their free time? The sad thing is, Sakura responded, none of that was during their free time. Niji's head shot in her direction, alarmed. You mean that was for a mission? He had never been so grateful to be on Kai's team before. Well... Yes, Sakura admitted reluctantly. It's really not as bad as it sounds, though.